up in the fear of God and let us listen to the Holy Gospel a gospel according to St. Luke may his blessings be with us all Amen from the Psalms of our father David the prophet and the king may his blessings be with us all Amen mercy and truth have met together righteousness and peace have kissed truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, whose glory is due forever. Amen. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in, his wo in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his handmaid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he has, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name and his mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. And he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her one God. Amen. So over the past few weeks we have been talking about the miracles of Christmas. Two weeks ago we talked about the very first miracle where um, involved a lady, her name was Elizabeth, and a guy, his name was Zacharias, and how in their very old age God has listened to their prayers and gave them the son that they have been looking for for a long time. We then contemplated on the keys of answered prayers. Last week, we talked about the second miracle, where a miracle that has no president, precedence in all the history of humanity, 
where a young, simple virgin will conceive and through the Holy Spirit and bear forth a son who will be the savior of humanity. We saw how St. Mary responded to this message and saying a beautiful phrase, let it be according to your will. And last week we focused on listening and obeying God's will. Today marks the third miracle where we see the visit of Saint Mary to Elizabeth and we see how during this encounter how Elizabeth and her son John and her womb were both filled by the Holy Spirit. One can only imagine how during this meeting Saint John got blessed and how he from his happiness he leaped for joy and found himself present before his creator. Again, in this story, we see the magnitude of St. Mary's holiness. It is truly a mind-boggling thing to try to wrap our head around St. Mary and her many virtues, specifically her humility. St. Mary had just received the news that she will bear the son who will be the savior of this humanity the creator of the universe. And what does the next, the very next thing that she does? She, when she heard about Elizabeth's pregnancy, the next thing she did is she packed her stuff and the Bible says she went with haste. She, she ran to the hills of Judea to go and serve. It's really amazing. We know sometimes whenever we get a compliment or some, someone says of an achievement that we have done, how easily we can get full of ourselves. But this is not St. Mary. Even though she is in a position where the angels should be coming and serving her, she lets go of everything and runs to go and serve. Why is that? Because last week she said, I am the servant of the Lord. I am the servant of the Lord. If we are, if I am the servant of the Lord, the only way this gets translated is by service. It's truly a wonderful lesson for all of us. Today we will be focusing on a specific phrase which is filled by the Holy Spirit. We see the term Holy Spirit popping up during the season multiple times. Uh, the angel Gabriel told St. Mary that she will conceive by the Holy Spirit. Today we hear about the Holy Spirit filling Elizabeth and St. John in, their, in her room. So today we, I want to use, by the grace of God, this opportunity to talk a bit about the Holy Spirit. So we should start talking a bit about the history of this Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit... Uh, it's one of the most powerful things a human can have. I think we can all come to an agreement when we say that there is nothing more powerful in this whole universe than God himself. And since God is a living being, he has a spirit. And this spirit has the same qualities of God, meaning it is just as powerful. Now here's the amazing thing. We all, as Christians have something that no other person, no other faith in this universe has. And that is the Spirit of God. We call this the Holy Spirit. The story begins by Christ himself saying, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So Christ here was saying, it is good for me to leave. Because once I leave, I'll be sending you a part of me that will be your Helper. They will be in each and every one of you. And sure enough, 10 days after Christ's ascension, he 
sends down the Holy Spirit on the disciples. We read this in the book of Acts as tongues of fire on top of the disciples. Now, what does the Spirit do to the disciples? Remember St. Peter? Remember how he was during the crucifix? Remember how scared he was in front of a, a servant lady who told him, you believe in Christ? You're, you're one Christ's follower. What did he do? He denied. He was so scared. Yes, that saint, the same St. Peter, but now with the Holy Spirit. He got, he got up and he said one sermon. One sermon that was able to convert 3,000 people on that same very day. That is, my beloved, the same spirit that both you and I as Christians have. This spirit was the main driving force of Christianity. That's making Christianity spread out like wildfire. Now, remember all the things I've been talking about in the previous sermons? About being Christ's disciple, about following God's will, about inheriting the kingdom of heaven. All of this is not possible without the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power, it's the engine, it's the driving force to anything that is good. Since, and God knows very well how weak we are, He sent us this helper. A little bit, let's touch a little bit about the history of the Holy Spirit in terms of church traditions. During the early days, when the disciples received the Holy Spirit, they used to go around, and when you used to spread Christianity, they would go and they would lay their hands on the new Christians. And this is how they would be delivering the Holy Spirit onto the new Christians. But of course, was, as Christianity was spreading very quickly, it was not realistic for them to go and start laying hands. So what did they do? They created this oil, the oil that we call today the Holy Myrun, and they mixed it with the spices that were on Christ's body during his burial. He took the spices and he took this oil, they mixed it together, and then they sent it out to their disciples, the apostles sent it to the disciples and their disciples, and told, told them, take this oil, and whomever you anoint, you're essentially delivering the Holy Spirit to them. So the mechanism of transferring the Holy Spirit changed from laying of hands to anointment of oil. And yesterday was my, my first baptism uh, as a priest. And it was, it's, it's truly a blessed, a blessed uh, moment. So now that we have received the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us is a vessel of the Spirit. Each and every one of us is a vessel of the Holy Spirit. A vessel essentially is a cup. And as you can imagine, us as cups of Holy Spirit, some of us has a drop of Holy Spirit, some of us has a half cup full, some of us has a full cup of Holy Spirit, someone is overflowing with Holy Spirit. So how can, as a Christian, measure how full is my cup? The answer is very simple. You measure your Holy Spirit activity by your fruits. What are the fruits? St. Paul lays out the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians. He says, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You want to know how full you are? You measure yourself with these qualities. Where do I stand? Where, how much love do I have? How peaceful I am? How kind and generous am I? How much faith do I have? Depending on how much you measure, this is how much active your Holy Spirit is in you. The theme of the third hour in the Holy Prayer book in the Agbeya 
the whole theme is about the Holy Spirit. The Gospel, the litanies, all talk about the Holy Spirit. The Gospel specifically says about the fruits of the Spirit. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that brings fruit, he prunes, that it may bring forth more fruit. How fruitful are we as Christians? How loving are we as Christians? How compassionate are we as Christians? I'm sure some of us have met people who are filled by the Holy Spirit. They have probably made an impact in your life. They probably have left, left a print in your life, in your mind. They have something different about them. We call them true Christians. These are the ones that have love, pure love to everyone around them. So now that I have this Holy Spirit, how can I make use of Him? The Holy Spirit is a person. So we call Him a Him. For us, to make use of the Holy Spirit, we need to have a relationship and we need to learn to hear His voice. We need to learn to hear His voice. Now, imagine with me if we have a room crowded full of 50 people and all of them are strangers you have never met except one of them and that person is my brother who happened to be visiting. Now you enter the room, you're blindfolded and everyone is talking. All you hear are random noises. Now, do you think you'll be able to recognize the voice of my brother? Probably not. Do you think I would be able to recognize it? Probably yes. And why is that? Well, two reasons. A, you do not know my brother. And B, he did not spend too much talking with my brother. So, back to the Holy Spirit. How do I distinguish the voice of the Holy Spirit among all the other voices around me? How do I know what he is saying to me? The same thing as before, by having a true relationship. For, having, for us to have a real relationship with the Holy Spirit, we have to have a, a real relationship with God. Meaning, we have to treat God in our lives as a real person. This is how you establish a relationship. When you communicate. By opening up all the specific areas of your lives. By asking continuously for grace, for help, for wisdom. By opening up your heart. Opening up your minds, your thoughts, your habits, your choices, your fears, your anxieties, your hopes and your dreams. We cannot treat God as a, as a help desk where I only see him when I need something. You have to have, it's, it's not genuine, it's not real. You have to have a deep, long standing relationship. So when you pray, you expose everything to him. You open, you show him your weaknesses, you show him your faults, you show him your troubles. You treat him as a real physician and you show your wounds. In the litany of the gospel, there's a phrase that's very beautiful. It says, for you are the hope of us all, the healing of us all. Lord Jesus Christ is willing to heal only if we open up and we show our wounds. And as all of you know, communication goes both ways. I talk and I must listen. Now, for us to hear what he says, we must, we must practice to listen. One of the most effective ways of listening is through scriptures. You must trust that he will be speaking. This is the thing, Christ's voice is faint. 
the Isaiah talks about Christ, he says, you do not hear his vo voice in his, on the streets. His voice is very calm and gentle and soft. You have to really listen and really have the open ears. And thankfully, God is not limited in the number of ways he can talk to us. He spoke to Moses in a, burn, in a burning bush. He can speak to you in an email, in a text message, in circumstances, to your mom or dad, through Abuna, through a sermon. He will talk. Christ will send you the messages. But there are two important things. One, you must be ready to listen. And two, you must obey what he tells you to do. You must obey, especially when the Spirit tells you something that is very hard to do. For example, I guarantee you, if we stand here today in the liturgy, and ask for the Spirit to work in us. Do not be surprised if the Spirit starts to send you messages right away. Do not be surprised when the Spirit tells you, you need to go right now and you need to reconcile with your friend that you have upset. Do not be surprised when he goes and tells you, you need to go and talk to that family member who you are not in good terms with and apologize. And when you hear that voice, for us to have a true relationship, you must obey. You must obey the voice. Otherwise, we will be doing what St. Paul says, which is quenching the Spirit. When the Spirit talks to us and we turn him away, we are quenching the Spirit. Do not be surprised when the Spirit tells you to stop watching the things which are making you stumble or to stop the relationship with that friend that is taking you back. And what happens when you obey these calls of the Spirit? Something strange will happen. You will start to see miracles in your life. Slowly but definitely surely, you will start transforming you will start changing and becoming more and more of what the Spirit wants you to be until you eventually became, become the image of God Himself, full of love, full of humility, full of virtues, just like Saint Mary. Let us all pray today during this liturgy that God moves His Holy Spirit in us to make us have a new beginning with Him and to start having a really real relationship with him to make us more like him, his son Jesus, and glory be to God forever. Amen. In the day, I'm going to talk about the third verse of the Bible, which is going to talk about the visit of the Prophet of Azra to the Prophet of Ali Sabat. And this third verse is the result of the year of the year of the year of the year. ونلاقي ان الانجيل بيتكلم ازاي القديسه اليسا باط وابنها يوحنا اتملأت من الروح القدس وانا حبيت النهارده بنعمه ربنا نتكلم شويه عن الروح القدس الروح القدس 